Now before I can install the carburetor, I have to repair the fuel lines on this uh, fuel tank here. So I'm going to check inside to see the fuel filter in there and retrieve the fuel line out of there. That the fuel line is broken right in there, so I'm just going to pull it from the top. And remember which fuel lines you're taking out. Now this is the small line, so just remember that. Now on this side here for the primer fuel line, I'm just going to push it in like that. And I have to the tank like that. Now these are the parts that came out of the fuel tank. If your filter is varnishized like that, it's no more good. And these fuel lines obviously are no more good. This is the small part that goes over here on the fuel tank. And it's for the primer. Now the fuel line size for the primer hole is 332 inside diameter and 3 16 outside diameter. Now what I've got here is some Orgon fuel line or you can use some Tigon and cut the tip on an angle like that. This will make it easier to insert in the fuel tank. Now insert it in there. You may have to turn it as you push down. Squeeze in a good couple inches in there. Now you'll need to retrieve it with a hook like that on a piece of wire. Now once you've got it retrieved like that, just cut the end flat and then insert the connector that came out of the fuel tank earlier, just like that. And now pull the fuel line back in and pull it up right up to here underneath the tank and it's going to stop there. And I'm going to leave it like that. Now you can see the black connector in the fuel tank where it's at. That's how you want it to be. Now the other fuel line that goes in here is 564 inside diameter inside the fuel line. And the outside diameter for that is 964. So again with this fuel line here too, you would cut an angle on the end like that. Now I'm going to insert it into the hole. Turn it and push down at the same time and this is going to really help it go down quicker. Once you've got 2-3 inches in there, retrieve it with your wire again. And if you pull on it on this end, it's going to go in good. Now with your side cutters, cut the tip of it flat as well. And I've got another filter from another weed eater and just insert your filter in there. You may want to spray it with a liquid wrench or a bit of oil just to make it easier to put in there. If you still find it hard to get the filter in after lubricating it, grab a small screwdriver like this, insert it in the tip and turn it around in the fuel line. It's going to expand the tip of the line and make it easier to put the filter back in. So I've managed to get it in all the way to the fuel line. Now I'm going to put the filter back in the fuel tank. I'm just going to pull back on the fuel line a bit. You want to keep at least uh, 5 inches in the fuel tank like that. So just reinsert your filter. Now the fuel lines are in properly and what I'm going to do is trim them once I've got the carburetor on so that I know exactly what length to cut them at. Now it's time to put the carb back on. The carb goes this way like that in this position here. So first of all you want to put the throttle lever back on there. Line up the carburetor with the holes here to the holes there. Make sure your gasket is on properly. Now what you need is the carburetor cover which also holds the air filter and the two screws like that. Put them in and get them started. Don't tighten the two bolts too much because you're just screwing them into plastic. 
Now check your throttle and if you see this moving then you've got it on right. You can also lube your throttle cable by standing your weed eater up and squirting some liquid wrench right down in the cable here and then move it back and forth and the lubricant will go down the cable. Now I'm going to hook up the fuel lines back up. Now the small fuel line which is to the front of both of the fuel lines goes to the first connector right here. So you would just basically line up your fuel line and then just cut it off and now insert it. You can leave yourself a bit extra fuel line, doesn't hurt. And push it in all the way like that. And this fuel line connects to this connector here on the carb. Now if you can't reach this, you can loosen the carburetor. Don't take the bolts right off, just loosen it so you can access it with your fingers. And I'll retighten the bolts. Got it fueled up, it's ready to be started and see how it runs. And I'm going to be adjusting the carburetor. And there's only one screw to adjust the running of the carburetor, and it's this screw right here. If your motor runs too lean, you would unscrew it. If it runs too rich, you would screw it in slowly. I'm going to do this with full throttle and turn the screw till it runs at its best and then the final adjustment will be this screw right here which is the idle adjusting screw by itself so when the motor runs good I'm going to leave the screw there and then adjust this one I've got this quicker state one lube penetrating oil and this is what I use for my quick start because it has a bit of oil in it it's better than just putting in straight quick start so I'm going to spray a bit in the carb just to get it going quickly and to pump the fuel to the carb quickly. It's April 9th and it's snowing and I'm working on a weed eater. Kind of crazy. Anyways, seems to run good. Now I'll just uh, try it out. Another quick start. Now it should start the first pull without anything. Back the air filter. This uh, metal grid goes over here inside like that. Then the air filter goes in like that. Now this cover goes up like this and the two Allen screws go on here. So now I've got it all fixed up. I'm gonna throw it in my collection and maybe trade it for something because I've got like four other weed eaters. I wouldn't recommend taking your weed eater if you have the exact same one to a small engine shop because it could cost as much as buying a new one just to get this done on it. If they do work on it and it still doesn't work, they're still going to charge you. So you may end up just having to give it to the shop. So sometimes they may keep it for parts and not charge you, but most of the time they'll charge you. So if you can do it yourself, you're going to save a lot of money. Those kits are about five to ten bucks each and the fuel lines a couple bucks per foot so it's a cheap fix and if you follow my video closely you should be able to do this by yourself